God bless you, my beloved. Thank you for being with us today. We are Abundant Grace Church, and I'm the pastor, Bishop Ramon G. Maria. Please contact us if you have a prayer need or a question about our ministry. You may contact us at abundant.grace at att.net. Our message title today is, The Holy Spirit is Life. I will be coming from the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 16, which reads as follows from the King James Version, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The Good News Bible renders it. God's Spirit joins himself to our spirits to declare that we are God's children. My beloved, this will be part one of a two-part series. The Holy Spirit of God always produces general effects on those who really have him. There are certain marks of his presence in our souls that prove that he dwells within us. In this message, I will set down these certain marks of the Holy Spirit's presence in a person. When you come to Jesus Christ, you repent and declare him as your Savior and Lord. The Holy Spirit comes to dwell within you. Then the Holy Spirit guides you, directs you, enhances you, convicts you, guides you, fills you with wisdom. And we will speak about these things as we go further in the message. First, my beloved, all who have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit have been made alive in Jesus Christ with a mind to do the things of God along with becoming spiritually alive with the ability to have eternal life in Christ. Eternal life means that you will dwell with Jesus Christ forever. There will be no end. This also gives us, as true Christians, and let me add something here before I go any further. Because you belong to a congregation, a church, or you were baptized when you were young, that does not make you a Christian. Only through repentance and belief in Jesus Christ, by a profession of faith, can you have eternal life. Can you be declared as a Christian. So once again, this also gives us as true Christians the ability to discern darkness from light and to walk in the new act of creation, which can only come through Jesus Christ by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Unless the Holy Spirit draws you, you cannot come to Christ. Romans chapter 8 and verse 2 says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. My beloved, the standards of the Spirit who gives life through Jesus Christ have set you, me, and every other confessing Christian free from the law of sin and death. Free from the standards of sin and death, which is judgment according to the law of God. You cannot go to heaven unless Christ is your Savior and Lord. Many people walk after the law, which could not save you. When you lived under the law, you had to have a priest atone for your sins once a year. But through Jesus Christ and his one sacrifice on Calvary, it is done once and for all, and it is eternal. As true Christians, we are indwelled with the spirit of life through Christ. The spirit gives life. The spirit of God breathed into Adam, and he became a living soul. The Gospel of John, chapter 6 and verse 63 says, It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh. The spirit does it. The flesh profiteth nothing, but the spirit gives life and life eternal. See, we are all by nature dead in trespasses and sins. In the flesh, we can do nothing good. According to the flesh, we have neither feeling nor interest concerning the things of God. We have neither faith nor hope nor fear nor love of the things of God. Our dead hearts are in a state of inactivity, resulting from a lack of mental or physical energy to gain the knowledge of God and Christ. We have no desire, in plain words, no desire for the things of God. Look at an atheist. He has no desire for the things of God. In the physical <coughs> and deadliness of our spirits, we are only alive to the things of wealth, earthly learning, politics, and pleasure, but still dead to Christ, which means have no eternal life in heaven. All these things are changed when the Holy Spirit comes to live in our hearts through Jesus Christ, and he raises us from the state of death 
and makes us new creatures in Christ. He causes old things to pass away and all things to become new. You have a new life. You're not dead anymore. Dead to the things of God, but you are alive to the things of God. He awakens our conscience and inclines our will toward God. He gives us a new heart. He gives us the desire to put off the old nature and to put on the new nature of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Second, all who all, let me phrase it this way. All of those that are indwelled with the Holy Spirit are taught by him, taught, guided, you know, led by him. John chapter 14 and verse 26 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. The Holy Spirit will bring the word of God, you know, the words of read in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He will bring them words to life where they will be alive. You will desire them. You will love to hear them. You will love to live by them. As humans, we are by nature ignorant of spiritual truth. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. My beloved, when in a state of being unregenerate, which means not regenerated, which means not saved in plain words, our eyes are blinded. We neither know God Christ, ourselves, the world, sin, heaven, or hell, as we should. We don't understand them. Some people, they're always sending people to hell. They say, but then they say, well, there is no hell. And I'll find out when I die if there's really a heaven and a hell. It'll be too late. When you die without Christ, you immediately go to hell. Then you will go to truth. And you can't change your mind and come back and want to do it again. We see all things under false colors, which means... We see things different. We think things are one way when they are really not that way. The Holy Spirit alters entirely this state of things, opens the eyes of our understanding, illuminates us, calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light, takes away the veil of blindness, shines in our hearts, and enables us to see things as they truly are. That there is a heaven, there is a hell, there is light, there is dark, there is purity, there is righteousness, and there is sinfulness and trespasses. This is exactly why true Christians are in agreement concerning the facts of true Christianity. The main reason for this is the true fact that we as true Christians have all learned in one school, and our master is Jesus Christ. Amen. And that school is made clear to us through the Holy Spirit. The words of Jesus become life. They become true. They become brightness. They become powerful through the Holy Spirit. As true Christians, we can understand one another at once and find common ground in our communication with one another and communion and fellowship, in other words, with Jesus Christ. As true Christians, we have been taught the same language by the Holy Spirit, whose lessons are never forgotten. The Holy Spirit will bring all truth into your remembrance. Third, all true Christians have the Holy Spirit dwelling within them and are led and directed by him. A true Christian is like an infant who desires natural milk and refuses other foods. When a baby is born and the mother breastfeeds the baby, it is natural for the baby to want to drink the milk from the mother. A true Christian is like an infant who depends solely on the mother to caress, to hold, to rock, to sing to them. Those of you that are mothers understand this fully. A true Christian desires the sincere milk of the word of God. Also, they thirst for righteousness sake. They search for truth in the word of God. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 2 says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Unless a baby, an infant, has the mother's natural milk, it will not grow strong because there are certain vitamins, certain things in a mother's milk that gives the baby what it needs. Years ago when they came out with all this alternative milk, so the, the mother, like the, the mother was a working mother and she had to go right back to work. So they would give her, you know, Infamil and all these other things. And it was proven that it didn't have the effect on the baby as a natural mother's milk. So as a Christian, the written word of God has a more powerful 
effect on you as you read it, as you meditate on it, rather than read commentaries or devotionals. Yes, they're good, but let the Holy Spirit minister to you through the reading and the study of the Word of God. Pray, worship, read the Word of God, and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you. Fourth, all true Christians have the Holy Spirit dwelling within them and are convicted by the Holy Spirit for their sinfulness. This is the special office of the Holy Spirit that Jesus promised he would fulfill by his death, burial, and resurrection, my beloved. Jesus promised that he would send the Holy Spirit. John chapter 16 and verse 8 reads, And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Only the Holy Spirit can open man's eyes to the real extent of his guilt and corruption before God. He always does this when he comes into our soul to indwell us, to live within us. He puts us in our right place and shows us the vileness of our own hearts and makes us cry out to God for mercy. He pulls down pride, self-righteousness, self-justifying notions that we are born with and makes us feel as we should about sinfulness. This is where we realize that we are evil, we are bad, and deserve to be in hell. The real truth is, my beloved, ministers of the gospel of Christ may alarm us for a little while. You know, you go to church, you feel guilty, you come back, maybe the next day, you know, you start your week and you're back into that groove again. When you hear the word on Sunday, sure, you may be convicted. You may realize that you are sick in your soul, you are cold in your heart. But then you allow the word of God to slip away. You allow Satan to steal the word of God from you. And you become cold once again. As the week goes further, you become colder and colder. Then you go back to church again. And the Holy Spirit speaks to you. And then you may leave the church. Because let me say, you cannot only go to church on Sunday and not have anything to do with God the rest of the week and walk in victory through the preached message, through the word of God. You will fall on your face once again. You will fall into sin once again. If you don't follow the conviction of the Holy Spirit, your strength to repel sinfulness will pass away like the dew of the morning. My beloved, you might think that, oh, I did my duty, I went to church this week. Why did you go to church? Did you go to church to hear the word of God? Did you go to church to sing praises, to receive from God? Or did you go because you wanted to have fellowship? It's like an organization. It's like a gathering of friends. Your only true friend, my beloved, is Jesus Christ. He is the one that you can trust. If you go to church just to see people, just to go out after church to eat, you're going to church for the wrong reasons. And you need to examine yourself and look at where you are in your walk with Jesus Christ. Fifth, all true Christians are led by the Holy Spirit to Christ, the salvation. He doesn't lead you in any other direction except to Jesus Christ. The special part of the office of the Holy Spirit is to testify of Jesus Christ and to take the things of Christ and show them to you, to me, to all of us, to bring his word to light, to life. Why is it that so many people read, they can read books and books every week, love romance novels and everything else. But when it comes to the Word of God, they don't have time to read the Word of God. They don't have time to meditate on the Word of God. Why? Because their priorities are in the wrong place. If you are giving more to the world than you are giving to God, you need to examine your salvation. If you say you are saved, and you don't have fellowship with Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit, you better repent because you are not part of the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ is not your Savior and Lord. John chapter 15 and verse 26 says, The helper whom I will send to you from the Father will come. This helper, the Holy Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, will declare the truth about me, he says. Jesus Christ says the Holy Spirit is going to tell you the truth about me. So if the Holy Spirit isn't in you, you don't have salvation. You don't care anything about Jesus Christ. You don't know anything about Jesus Christ. You don't know his true nature. You don't have fellowship with him. You might have fellowship with a church, an organization, but you have no fellowship with Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. Or you would know the truth and the truth would have set you free from sin and death. By nature, many think that they can work their way to heaven. Many churches, many denominations, press, works, works, works to get to heaven. That is a lie from hell. They imagine in blindness that 
They can make their own peace with God. You cannot make your own peace with God. Your peace with God only comes through Jesus Christ. From this miserable blindness, the Holy Spirit delivers them. Only through the Holy Spirit can you know the truth and be free. It shows them that within themselves they are lost and hopeless and that Christ is the only door by which they can be saved and enter into heaven. He teaches them that nothing but the precious blood of Jesus Christ can atone for sin and that through his act of mediation alone, God can be just and the justifier of the ungodly. Only through Jesus Christ can you get to heaven. My beloved, just as the dove flies to the well-known cliff of the rock for protection in the storms, in the coldness, in the adversities, the dove flies into the cleft of the rocks. He goes toward that cliff and gets into the smallest cliff of the rock. And so does the soul of him who has the Holy Spirit flee to Jesus Christ for safety and rest. Won't you be that dove today and go to the rock, go to that cliff, get in that cleft and be protected. That cleft is Jesus Christ. Won't you do that today? Please, I ask you, if you have never received Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, please do so today. Here is the criteria. You must repent of your sins. Believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior and the only way through which you can get to heaven. That he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven. He's now sitting at the right hand of God the Father. And from that position, he shall come to judge the dead and the living. If you want to do that today, I want to lead you in a model prayer. But remember, you must be sorry for your sins, repent of your sins. If you want to do that today, I want to lead you in a prayer. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I heard the message today. And through this message, I feel that I don't have salvation. I am not saved. That if I died, I would go to hell. But I don't want to go to hell. Today I have been convicted of my sinfulness, my blindness. I want to receive salvation today. I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior and the only way to heaven. I confess today my sins and I repent of my sins. And I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord. I believe he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, ascended into heaven, so God's sitting at the right hand of God the Father, from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. I believe that today. I confess that today. And I profess that today. And I believe that through this act today, I have received Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord. And when I die, I will go to heaven. And I thank you for saving me today. In Jesus' name I pray. And thank you. Amen. My beloved, if you truly repented by saying that prayer, let me be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. And what I want you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church, get an audience with a pastor, tell him what happened, ask him to anoint you with oil, to pray with you, to pray for you, ask him to mentor you, ask him to give you a Bible if you haven't one. My beloved, this is very, so very, very important, your growth in Jesus Christ. Ask him to teach you to be a witness for Jesus Christ. Ask him to teach you how to lead others to Jesus Christ. My beloved, this is so very important that now you obey the commandments of the Lord to go into the world and preach the gospel, teach the gospel, be a witness for Jesus Christ. Then what I would like you to do is contact by email at abundant.grace at att.net or through our website at www.abundantgracechurch.net or through our other website, AbundantGraceOfMelothian.com. You can follow us on social media, like you are watching this on YouTube, or through YouTube, you are watching this on all the outlets, Facebook, Twitter. You're listening to the audio portion on Spreaker.com. So just Google us, Abundant Grace Church of Midlothian, or my name, Bishop Ramon Di Maria. Thank you for being with us today. This is part one of our message series titled, The Holy Spirit is Life, from the book of Romans, chapter 8 and verse 16. Next week, we will pick up on part two. I've given you five parts of your salvation today. Next week, we will do part six through ten. Thank you for being with us once again. I pray that you have a blessed week. And please, contact us at abundant.grace at att.net.